In this video, I'm going to walk through the Microsoft Learn Labs uh, Scale Multiple Azure SQL Databases with SQL Elastic Pools. So the cool thing about Microsoft SQL Elastic Pools is the fact that you're able to combine activities amongst multiple SQL databases into one common pool that can be shared. Think of this like a rideshare program where instead of everybody having their own car and hopefully having the right size for their entire family, what they can do is they can all chip in into purchasing a group of cars that you can then rent out on a daily or hourly basis. Basically, you help out with a larger pool of vehicles, or in this case, SQL databases, and then on the day that you only need a small vehicle or a small database, you only consume a little bit. But then if you eventually need a larger vehicle or a larger database, then on those days you can use those systems as well. Uh, so let's see, go ahead and talk about creating a SQL pool. Uh, it talks a little bit about creating a SQL Elastic pool with probably more spe specific details than what I could possibly go through. Uh, let's see, adding databases to the pool and then, yeah, let's jump right in to creating the pool. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and create my, uh, my uh, sandbox. And while that's creating, it's talking about uh, creating a fitness database uh, for two different locations, Vancouver and Paris. And so we want to set this up to have two different locations. Uh, let's see, so it's gonna be going to start us off by having us set some variables. So let's go ahead and copy that into Notepad uh, because some of these I need to change, such as the location and the password. Uh, the location, just to select a region from the list. So I'm going to say West US 2. It's the first one on the list. And then I'm going to go ahead and give it a password of password 01. Just because it's a great super secret password, right? Gonna go ahead and copy that and then paste it into the cloud shell. Now that those variables are set, we can then reference them later. Uh, if you're not familiar with that, basically if I do an echo dollar sign uh, admin underscore login and enter, then it basically spits out the value that was assigned to the admin login up here. And so I can constantly refer to admin login as opposed to referring to the name itself. All right, so step number two, create a server named fitness SQL dash NNNN. That's going to be a randomly generated number, which was created right here. Uh, so we can actually confirm that by looking at the server name. We have fitness SQL 4602. So let's go ahead and copy and paste that. And that will create, create a SQL server in Azure uh, with the name of that server name we just saw in the resource group that we defined right up here, in the location that we defined right up there, and then with the admin username and password that we also defined up here. So that will take a few moments. All right, and now that the install is done, uh, let's go ahead and create a database called Fitness Vancouver DB on that server. So we're going to go ahead and create a SQL database. Uh, we're going to create it in that resource group on that server we just created called Fitness Vancouver DB. All 
Once the database for Fitness Vancouver is done, then we'll do the same thing for Fitness Paris. So we're going to be creating two different databases on the same server. Let's go ahead and actually just paste that in while that's running. When that's done, it wants us to go ahead and open up the Azure portal. So I get that going. Uh, we want to then look at the uh, homepage and create a resource, specifically a, an elastic pool. We'll call it Fitness SQL Pool. We'll select our server, configure the elastic pool, uh, set it as basic, and then create. And actually, I think I can do that while the databases are still running. So let's go ahead and do that. So I'm in the Azure portal. Let me make sure I am in the right. Yes, that looks good. So homepage, and I'm going to create resource and I'm just gonna type in elastic pool. SQL elastic database pool. There we go. And hit create. Uh, asks, let's see, resource group. Yep, we have to choose the existing resource group. Uh, for the elastic pool name, we can go ahead and type in whatever we want. They are suggesting fitness SQL pool. <clears throat> the server, we can go ahead and specify why can't I find my existing server? Um, let's try that one more time. Let's go ahead and cancel that. Create. Before I go any further, no available items. Interesting. There's our server. There's one database. The second database should be showing up shortly. Sometimes the Azure portal takes a few seconds to add things. So we'll try this again. So SQL Elastic Database Pool creates resource group. Hmm. Alrighty, so I took a couple of minutes offline and I let it just kind of do its own thing. And now when I go into create resource and I type in SQL Elastic, let's see, SQL Elastic Database Pool and create. And we will see that we have the option right here. Uh, it's got my concierge, it's got my resource group. I see it's got my server already specified. And I can go ahead and type in a resource uh, Elastic pool name here, such as uh, Fitness Elastic. Uh, let's see, after that, I the instructions tell me I want to choose uh, and for compute. I want to click configure and I want to change this to basic. So instead of general purpose, I'm going to choose basic and basic and then apply and then finally review and create and create now it tells me that this will take several minutes to provision so we'll go ahead and fast forward to that point All right, and that didn't take anywhere near as long as I had expected. Okay, so let's go ahead and let's look into our SQL Elast our Elastic database pool. And what we want to do now is we want to add a couple of databases. So let's see, open the se uh, section, go to configure. So we're going to go to configure uh, the databases right there, and then add databases. 
So this is where you will specify the various databases that you want to be in your pool to be able to share the same workload capabilities. So I select both of those and apply. All right, and with that, we can then come back to the instructions and we get to move on to managing the pools, performance and cost. So here it talks a little bit more about performance and cost, uh, specifically the DTU versus vCore pricing. And you can kind of see from those charts there exactly what the difference between DTU and vCore pricing is. The idea being with DTU is, well, if you need so much compute, you're probably going to need so much storage. And if you need more compute, then you're probably going to need more storage. And so they've scaled this linearly. So if you buy 50 DTU, you get that. 100 DTU, you get that. 150 and so on. Just to add more and more as you move along. The alternative is to go with a vCore model where you get to pick and choose which configuration you want it's all really going to depend on your business needs dtu quick and easy vcore more specific but more difficult to manage uh talks about reviewing price estimates and so we can actually see that let's actually see uh oh first off let's save that and it's in progress. Yeah, we'll go back to that. Uh, so we can actually see, yeah, if, if we choose the DTU modeling, we can choose our EDTUs and our database maximum size. And as you scroll one, the other one will scroll as well. As opposed to vCore, you can choose how many cores and how much data you need at that time. All right, let's go ahead and manage our pool. So back into the Azure portal, we're gonna go ahead and look at our, our SQL Elastic pool. Uh, we're going to configure the settings and choose between DTU and vCore pricing. So let's uh, so let's see. Let's go ahead and configure on the left hand side. Configure and currently we're on on basic, so we can see we can scroll up our DTUs. And as we scroll our DTUs, the data size automatically changes. All right, makes sense. Uh, we can also do the same thing under standard. We can choose our EDTUs. In this case, the maximum size uh, should change. Yeah, so currently uh, 200 DTUs gives me one terabyte, uh, 300, one and a quarter, and so on. Premium. Same thing, or vCore purchasing. And then in here we can specify how many vCores do we need versus how much data do we need. Yeah. Uh, let's see, yes, yeah, so we can obviously see, there should be able to see a price summary right down there at the bottom, of which my screen is zoomed in too far to be able to see the differences, but it's right there for us as necessary. All right, so let's go ahead and go back to our, let's see, cancel that. So we're back at the basic pool, uh, currently $75 per month ETA. Uh, we can specify this per, per database. So we could actually specify an, in, an individual database to be able to scale or shrink. Uh, maybe on a different size, there we go, uh, per database. So we can actually specify uh, each database gets uh, somewhere between 20 and 50 DTUs in order to help balance the load across them. All right, and then lastly, let's go ahead and create a new database in our pool. So let's come back up, let's go back up to overview. Yes, discard. And up here on the top, uh, we've been using configure. We can delete, uh, and we can also create databases right here. Uh, so in theory, we've already created two databases. We've created one in Paris, we've created one in the US. Uh, now we can create another one, in this case in London. So fitness 
London DB. And because we're creating this in the pool, it automatically specifies what server for it to go into. And the fact that we want this to be part of an elastic pool and which pool to be, and then review and create. So the great thing about having this fitness pool is we've already said that we're spending $75 a month or whatever the cost was. And then we can simply add additional databases to it without any additional cost to us. Not until performance is depleted do we actually need to upgrade our, D our DTUs or when additional performance is needed, we can upgrade our DTUs to, get, to cost us more, but also give us additional performance and capacity.